The final ethical question is around data sharing, which is probably the most important ethical question. Likewise, the medical AI space is grappling with balancing the responsibility of protecting patient data with the need for more data sharing. This fear is not unfounded in the US. The first half of 2023 saw 295 healthcare data security breaches, which have affected 39 million Americans. Hi everybody and welcome to Des and Lauren. We'll be speaking about artificial intelligence in the medical industry. And uh, can an AI doctor predict cancer or save lives? This is a feature article on Al Jazeera. We'll put the link in the description. And I think this is an important one to read. It's very long and it highlights quite a lot of facets of artificial intelligence being used in the medical industry. So it's absolutely a deep dive. Please do make the effort to click on that link and go through the entire article. We'll just be covering portions of it. Uh, there's many concerns, of course. And how do you feel about an AI doctor or Dr. AI? I think it doesn't matter what country you live in. Often the news of the day will have you stressed and worried about the future and AI will be lost on your priority list of things to concern yourself over. However, I do believe it should be number one on your priority list because it will determine how government is run, how business is run and how our lives are run, how our children are educated. It will determine so much and if we don't focus on this now and educate ourselves, then we're going to have a very interesting future. And we need to make decisions with regards to our governments and how they handle this issue. And many people will not know what governments are doing behind the scenes with regards to this. I don't think governments are handling the issue, At all. especially not in this country. So let's get into the article. It's very long, so we're just going to take highlights and snippets. Can AI really help doctors foretell diseases? Can it also help make treatment better? What are the rules of this game and what are the risks? The short answer is AI has shown promise in diagnosing, predicting and potentially even treating a range of medical conditions. Say leading scientists and entrepreneurs driving the technology. Entrepreneurs, money, money, money. But it's early days. There have been and will be stumbles and key technical limitations as well as ethical concerns remain unaddressed. And some of these things no one has answers for. So answer needs to be created and this is where i get really interested because i look at the meticulous ways in how people create a problem to create an answer and people willing to hand over all the information the digital information the medical information the genetic information yeah to ai i would like to know in the comments if you would like to have ai predict what kind of diseases you would possibly have in the future uh, would you like to know that beforehand? Uh, because I think the alternative is much easier and much freer and that's just living a healthy, as, as healthy as a life as possible. I think until a person is in a position uh, where they are medically affected, where they uh, feel that they are diseased or whatever the case may be, and then maybe their insights might change. They might become biased. Uh, towards any solution to whatever problem they have. Or bring it closer to home if something happens to your child. Exactly. <laughs> Would you rather not know beforehand that Yeah, a lot of people change because of things that happen to them. And it's something we stress a lot. Lots of things will happen to people that will determine the outcome of and especially how they behave and make decisions in their lives. And often it involves removing freedom. Unfortunately, yes. So until something affects you, it's easy to fight for freedom. When something affects you, do you still place freedom above all else? I think that's the ultimate test of integrity mm -hmm. of every individual. And it's a very tough, tough question to answer. But I think we need to prepare, be prepared for those answers beforehand. This article highlights that artificial intelligence in the medical industry is not a new journey. That in fact, mm -hmm. in the 1970s, AI was used to assist specifically in, in helping physicians diagnosing and treating bacterial blood infections and meningitis. And we know meningitis is an absolute killer, especially for kids. It used the available knowledge and ability of an expert in a certain domain as represented by if-then statements, functioning like an intelligent flowchart, where yes or no answers to the patient situation led down a path to one among a set of predetermined responses. So that, to me, seems like the most basic form. Mm. Uh, that you can get already in the 1970s. And, and obviously during the uh, COVID-19 pandemic, uh, AI and AI models just went rampant and mainstream media ran with articles of AI models predicting this and predicting that and they failed, didn't they? 
the, highlight, the article highlights how much they failed, and we'll get into that a little bit later. It's very fascinating to see that. And it's also fascinating uh, to witness time and time again humans' tendency to want to predict things. I mean, there's no species on Earth that makes Excel sheets and flow charts and diagrams uh, to try to predict the future. It is fascinating. The form and flexibility of healthcare AI, AI has changed dramatically since the 1970s. There are now numerous types of AI being researched for various healthcare responsibilities. In the United States from 2018 to 2019, the use of AI among life sciences organizations and healthcare providers more than doubled. And that was pre-pandemic time. The pandemic has only accelerated that, sh that trend. Globally, 2021 saw investments in healthcare AI double over the previous year. Last year, the international medical AI market was valued at more than $4 billion and is expected to grow by nearly a quarter annually over the next decade. So that's an interesting one to see where money's going. Yeah, huge investment in artificial intelligence. So these people believe that AI is the future. They are making it the future. There can be other options, but that is not where the money is spent. So you need to be aware of this. Much of the progress has been driven by machine learning, where AI aims to mimic the gradual methods by which human minds learn. Leading the show are artificial neural networks with a multitude of nodes connected like neurons and organized into layers. Each layer analyzes information, performs operations before passing it forward to the next. Well, um, doing this assumes that humans are just that, organisms. That there is no other um, ways or means for us to separate us from the animal kingdom. It sees us as just another form of animal or organism. And AI is dupli duplicating or replicating that. There is no space here for spirituality, morality, or any of those things. No ethics, and that is highlighted in this article. And I think I often think to the sci-fi movies where someone needs an operation and they go into this dome, and then this robot arm does a couple of things, and next minute they're fine. They're lying on a bed, sleeping and recovering. And uh, that's probably, in a way, a person's dream, because doctors can make mistakes, doctors have made mistakes, although it's rare. Um, but yeah, it talks about AI making mistakes, it does, big it does. mistakes. It does. So we, it's going to be interesting to see the future. Yes, the promise. We're going to talk about the promise and then also we're going to talk about uh, the problems as well. The standout advantage that AI offers in diagnosis is medical imaging. It is good at pattern recognition. So it can see things better than humans can. At the end of the day, uh, the president of Silicon Valley Healthcare Predictive Analysis Company, Lean DOS said it can be trained on a volume of image data that is several orders of magnitude more than any one human will ever analyze. That's well, quite that makes perfect sense. You know, analyzing patterns, uh, that is something that I think AI would be excellent at and obviously fast and better than humans. We've been using calculators and computers for a long time to do exactly that. And uh, that makes perfect sense. When it comes to moral questions, <laughs> who lives, who dies, etc. Well, it's good at uh, looking at brain scans and imaging. Predictive AIs are even more diverse in application. Researchers have found that AI could be leveraged to predict the likelihood of many conditions such as type 2 diabetes, heart disease, Alzheimer's and kidney disease based on lifestyle, medical records, genetic factors and more. And that is a, that's definitely a place of caution, especially if government has to get involved in ensuring their citizens are healthy, especially if everyone has a right to health and government enforces that right. Or, as in Canada, you have a right to kill yourself you if, you, uh, if, if you feel that you are not healthy or you're a burden to society, etc. Um, there's always transition periods to new ideas always. that people now cannot even fathom or imagine until it happens. And anything that can be used to solve a problem that is good for humanity can be used also as a weapon against humanity. And that's always what makes me nervous. Uh, and the, uh, it says here that the past few months have seen a significant breakthroughs in the use of AI to identify cancer risks. It can beat standard models in predicting breast cancer, research published in June showed. In January, researchers at the Massachusetts Institute of Technology unveiled an AI-based lung cancer risk assessment machine. And in May, Harvard scientists showed that an AI tool could identify people with the highest risk of pancreatic cancer up to three years before an actual diagnosis. 
So that's quite fa uh, fascinating. They don't go into the exact details of the nuts and bolts of how this machine works and that would be very interesting to study. I think just thinking that you're going to have a problem later down the line could accelerate the development of that problem later down the line. So it's, it does take away the human factor, the power mm. of the mind, that factor takes away uh, anything that's unexplained and I suppose a lot of people would definitely buy into it for the sake of health. The next portion we're looking at is failing the test and to me the concern is not that much failing the test but who decides whether the test was failed or not AI has the potential at least in theory to predict the severity of infections and model the spread of outbreaks the COVID-19 pandemic saw an explosion of AI tools that promised to do just that but the results were damning Two prominent reviews of nearly 650 AI-powered programs for COVID-19 diagnosis and treatment found none of them to be fit for clinical use. Other reviews of AI platforms for forecasting the spread of COVID-19 found them broadly ineffective, likely due primarily to issues with data availability. And this is where the ethical uh -huh. question comes in. This is key data availability so how do you make data more available and this should be a video all on its own or a topic all on its I own i think in summary what we'll say yeah just is that in order for us to live in a society that harnesses the power of ai to make life easier for everybody we have to have the mindset of sharing all of our information transparently no or it will not work, work. no privacy a full-on monitoring tracking and tracing society where government can then use all of that information to control your life and make decisions for you and what will government look like not what we have today and the risks to that it will be a machine a digital there might be a face of the machine like a human elected to be the face of the machine but ultimately I bet on that. the risks of that kind of society are numerous and frightening are we as humans willing to take that risk? And that's the bottom line to me at the end of the day. Where do you draw the line in the sand? And this is the ethical question being asked. Many other people are asking this question, including professionals, including people in the AI industry, are fearing the risk to themselves. I find it interesting that as a, a humanity we have come to this point where we could have developed completely differently if the economic system wasn't the most important thing governing the world right now and that's just uh, where we are right now and i believe we can change it otherwise we wouldn't be doing what we're doing mm -hmm. if we didn't believe that we could change the trajectory we're on then we wouldn't do what we were doing uh, those outcomes of the issues uh, with regards to data av availability those outcomes represent a reality check on ai in healthcare the tools to actually integrate it into the field of medicine are still nascent, nascent. yes over 95 percent of ai um, were developed pilot tested they never actually went to implementation stage central to the challenges confronting ai in medicine are three major limitations in the data used to develop it paucity access restrictions and quality so paucity means it takes time for them to get the data they need it quickly and that means a backbone infrastructure fifth sixth seventh generation so 5g that many people have complained about is just an absolute uh, starting level uh, with sixth generation technology we will have the internet of things where ai will be able to monitor all things in real time and that backbone is being rolled out uh, throughout the world. Fiber will mainly be used to achieve that. And most people were terrified of 5G towers for all the wrong reasons. <laughs> and it's, it's about the access of information and the Absolutely. spread of information that is the real thread. Uh, yet, even when there is data, it's not necessarily available to AI developers. Even every patient has a medical history with numerous data points, checkups, uh, readouts, diagnosis and prescriptions among other things. However, various healthcare organizations from hospitals to insurance and pharmaceutical companies lock different data points. Thus, medical data gets split and locked in different silos. Hello, global tracking system, healthcare system. Yep. <laughs> I think it's already being uh, tested in many places and it's just about adoption uh, with regard to governments. If the backbone is in place, uh, you have a proper fiber backbone within your country. 
uh, then it's very easy to implement. You, you however do need humans in the spaces where this backbone is available, aka cities. Uh, soon to be, aka smart cities. <laughs> what a future. So that's that really this the rest of the section speaks a lot about data and accessing of data and uh, as we said ethical questions the ethical too, question yeah. then rises when the AI errs this is the who, one aspect who do you blame who do you blame yes and that's obviously going to happen data sets can be biased it says um, for instance AI fa research found that uh, interesting sex gender age and ethnicity back in the day you'd either say sex age ethnicity or gender age and ethnicity ethnicity were really considered by ai less than 35 percent of the program studied had gender disaggregated data data sets collected and tabulated separately for women and men so, that so it's already biased towards this new world order <laughs> genderless society exactly. uh, concept Yes. The final ethical question is around data sharing, which is probably the most important ethical question. Likewise, the medical AI space is grappling with balancing the responsibility of protecting patient data with the need for more data sharing. This fear is not unfounded in the US. The first half of 2023 saw 295 healthcare data security breaches, which have affected 39 million Americans. Cybersecurity breaches aside, healthcare companies have seen no shortage of scandals over sharing patient data improperly. In 2017, London's Royal Free Hospital was embroiled in controversy over sharing the health data alongside personal information of 1.6 million patients with Google's deep mind. I think this is probably just a tip of the iceberg. I think people's data is being stolen all the time. And whenever you're doing something that is for free, it's not free. It's like when you're buying at a shop and the shop has a special card that gives you specials. They're actually monitoring your consumer habits so you are not doing anything for free your data your habits your ways and means of doing things and your medical information is being sold to many companies it is and it's probably one of the biggest crises around this fourth industrial revolution eking into our lives across the globe more recently the u.s federal trade commission Find popular mental therapy app BetterHelp 7.8 million. I'm sure you've seen their ads on YouTube mm -hmm. for sharing the information of 7 million consumers with third party platforms for advertising. So, people seeking uh, mental assistance because they're not coping with life, they are being used to siphon data from so that advertisers can benefit. I think that's shocking. It is absolutely just a money making racket. And at the end of the day, uh, people that don't know will just fall for things like this. And this is why we bring you this content, so that you do become aware, so that you can make more informed decisions in your life. Uh, the ending is a little bit sombering and sobering. There are no easy answers to privacy concerns. Uh, while people might not want to share their data, they are often eager to benefit from an AI trained on others' data. And that's the ethical question we have to ask ourselves. What kind of future do we want? A future where we can live independently and freely, have access to land ownership, roam in nature at our free will? Uh, or do we want a society where every fear that we've ever had uh, has an answer uh, by government or by AI? And I think it's an easy, easy decision for me. I'd rather live in freedom and have the risks associated with that than live in this over hyper secure world of complete control and surveillance this utopia that is being described many people will fall for that many people will beg for that uh, especially if situations are created that puts people in a difficult spot to make decisions and that is why this channel is about creating alternatives in your life and actually giving you training um, that is for free that you can use to make those differences in your life and empower yourself. Thanks everyone for watching this video and please remember to click the bell icon uh, if you subscribe so that you can get notifications for future videos. Share this video, like this video, talk to your friends and family about this topic just so that we can spread awareness for what is happening and do go to the article, click that link and read through the detail and understand the future that we are facing.